welcome. It's uh, it's been a while since we've done a video update aboard Field Trip. Uh, we're going to get better about that now that we have extra time on our hands during the lockdown with the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, plenty we're here, of time. Plenty of time. So where are we, Sarah? What, what, what's going on? We are in the Philippine Islands. We are anchored near Sangat Island um, in the Luzon province, which also is the province where Manila is located. So we are on, um, what's it called, severe lockdown, ex Extended lockdown, I don't know, some specific name, which means serious, so. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here, and we wanted to update everybody on what it's been like for field trip to be uh, under lockdown. Um, I think, first of all, just the key is in the Philippines, for the last two and a half weeks, things have been very strict on lockdown. We can't even go, we can't even take our boat and go from one island to the next island. Um, we're not allowed to do that. We're supposed to be pretty much on our boat. We can go ashore, small, a small nice resort here called Sangat Island uh, Dive Shop, Dive Resort, which has been a great place. Uh, no one's there but, but one couple. Um, and basically the big question that people have asked us, family, have been like, hey, well, what's, what's, has life changed? Can we find toilet paper? Can we, can we get food? And what's the answer to some of those things? Well, I mean, luckily the last eight or nine years that we spent on board have kind of prepared us for this. We've been living in a lot of isolated places for long periods of time. So yeah. we always keep things really stocked up. So yes, much to Mark's chagrin, I had plenty of toilet paper and we have plenty of canned food. And even though maybe it's not exactly what we want to eat all the time, but we have sustenance. So we're, we're very much prepared. And we live, like I said, very isolated. So we have homeschool, which is still the same We, Yeah. We're around each other 24/7. That's yeah. kind of normal for the last eight years. Everybody so works at home, so that's we it. all, yeah, we're 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 very used to this, with the exception of not being able to move the boat, or for us not to be able to go to, to local markets to buy our own produce. Yeah, so that's a big issue. We've had to ask the dive resort if when they go in for produce for their uh, their workers, if they can buy some for us. And they've been really great. They've uh, gone in, brought us back, you know, 15, 20 kilos worth of food. Um, fresh fresh produce and so it's been it's been overall really good I mean I think we're very fortunate because yeah. we're in this beautiful place we still do diving we've got hot springs behind us we've got a beautiful resort that's empty that we can go over I've got a dog the kids like to play with this dog what's the dog's name again it's uh, Amber Amber it's a shepherd yeah German yeah some sort of a shepherd German shepherd anyway kind of dog but it's been great so um, you know the big the big thing is I guess for field trip is not much has changed other than we need to get back on the the uh, doing our our uh, weekly updates on video which is something that we're going to work hard on doing starting this week. It is hard to feel like we are so far removed from everything, especially at this time when everybody is a little bit scared and just uncertain and going through a lot of these changes that we've gone through gradually. Everybody's been like suddenly. Right away put forced to be together 24 seven homeschooling for having to provision for a long period of time. And it's, I, I can't imagine just, it would, I've, it's hard for people. And I really, it's been nice to stay connected to those people and, and be able to talk to them about it, about how they're feeling and how they're doing. Um, we certainly do feel di disconnected a little bit. So that's been hard. But there's some long-term implications for us as international travelers. Um, we've had to really be watchful of other countries and their border um, restrictions. Right. So our big thing was we're trying to get to Malaysia because the kids were going to be in school. We're going to put the kids in school this fall. We still are. And we still hope to do that. Um, but yeah. we have we don't want to leave here until Malaysia is open so we have a place to go because right. we've seen so many of our cruising friends sailing for days on end to get to these ports and then they can't get in. They're not welcome to They're come rejected. in. So yeah. we definitely don't want to be put in that situation. The last thing yeah. we need to talk about, which is very important to our life as sailors, is the weather. Always a big consideration and this is no exception. So tell us about the weather. Yep. The big concern that we have right now is in the May time frame, the winds start to change. Right now heading down south uh, towards Malaysia, Singapore, and then of course around to Penang. We have a uh, following wind, so it's downwind, it's spinnaker type sailing. And in the May time frame, the winds start to change. When they change, it becomes a beat through the South China Sea. It's a pretty shallow sea, it creates very uh, confused and uh, uncomfortable seas sometimes. We don't want to beat into it. So that's what our big, big stress point is right now, trying to get 
trying to get down the south as far south as we can, and we're just simply having to wait for the country to start to open back up. We can't leave here and have no place to go. Um, so we can't leave here any, anyway right now. But that's the deal. So that's field trip in a, in a nutshell. We're doing great. We're safe. Uh, we're definitely isolated. Um, there's nobody on this island next to us other than probably 14, 15, 14 people, if that, with the resort, and that's it. Nobody around us. So uh, we feel very fortunate. Um, but we're ready to get rocking and rolling here as soon as we can. And that's the update from field trips. We'll, we'll take the opportunity to show you around a little bit. Uh, we got some drone shots and we'll kind of show you a little bit of uh, where we are and what we've been up to the last couple of weeks under quarantine in the Philippines. This is the hot springs that we have right near our boat, and it's a place we come, I don't know, every couple of days. We've had some nice time in here. Okay, we'll back up. Water is, how, what's it, 37, 38 degrees? Look at this. Yep. Yep, that's high. Oh, oh, water's. Thirty-eight degrees, but it's it it's pretty deep, huh? Yeah, look, look, this. Looks like my neck. That is deep. You used to only be up to like my waist. So in our little hot springs here, Michael is in search of the origin for the, the hot source. springs. The source, the source, not the origin, the source. Huh. We're gonna try and find the source out here. The water's so clear. Beautiful. Arm with a flashlight and a mask. <laughs> Good luck. If you find it, let me know. And this is our little peace and tranquility out here. Just gorgeous. Not a bad place to be spending uh, the lockdown here in the Philippines. So this is again about a five minute, 10 minute paddle from the back of the boat in the mangroves here. Just a very beautiful spot. Found a really deep hole, but yeah, I don't know if that's a source. Eliza said the guy's that was back there somewhere. Back over in there. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see anything, but there's the big hole right here. Okay. 
Nice. And you can see here that we've got 37 degrees, 37 degrees in the hot springs. That of course is Celsius. Uh, it was 32 degrees on the boat and 37 out here. So a little bit warmer, very nice. How's the water, Michael? Really cold and nice. It's like really nice. Is it, is it hot out there? Right here on the top is hot, like in the hot tub. Right below it's like ice water. Nice. Okay, so aboard field trip, we are getting ourselves ready to go burn some trash. One of the challenges we have as sailors, especially in remote areas, is finding proper disposal of our rubbish. So what that basically means is we get the opportunity to find a place, build a fire and burn some trash. We're gonna burn plastic and paper. So we can't burn obviously uh, anything else and even burning plastic we don't like to do, but since we have to deal with the, uh, uh, either we burn it or it goes somewhere in some village and back in the ocean, we prefer to burn it, right Michael? Yeah. So what's your job gonna be? Fuel. Which does what? Boom! Boom, huh? Yeah. We're gonna put some fuel over here in this jug and we're gonna use that as our grenade. fire starter or grenade. Michael wants to grenade it. This is a big bag of trash. Michael, show how big the trash is. How big is that bag of trash there, Bud Rope? No, pick it up. Can you pick it up? Ah! That's all burnable rubbish. So we're gonna burn it. Head ashore and get rid of it. Michael's in charge of running around the boat getting all the rubbish. Is that it, Michael? Yeah, I think so. And Sarah's, what are you doing, honey? I'm listening to my podcast, doing dishes. Doing dishes. Ready to hang out the fridge. All right. And Elizabeth, you're working on what over here? Hydroponics? Watering the plants. Watering the plants? Look at, the, look at the tomato plant. Uh -huh, we have 16 flowers. 16? Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Wow. We got, was that lemongrass? What's that you're watering there? Is it onions? Chives. Chives. And rosemary. And then I. Did you grow those rosemary from scratch? No, we got them out of market. And then I'm <laughs> propagating the our excess tomato plants so we can give them to the resort. Wow. Very yep. good. Got our green thumb going. Michael, grab our important, important stuff. <laughs> The fuel, more is better, less is more, more is more. Let's go blow this thing up. All right, looking kind of shallow. I'm gonna have to pick up the engine here. Michael, hold this for a second, okay? Yeah. We're rolling. Make it okay. grab it or something? Yeah, hold on, here, hold on. And grab it, whoa, 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 grab the painter. I know, I know. Okay. I'm gonna back this up a little bit. Just grab that whole painter. This is our little spot where we're gonna burn our rubbish. Maybe burn it last time. Just kind of go around the corner up there, across the rocks. And right around the corner is where we have the little fire pit. Oh yeah, I see it. You see it? Yeah. I was in high school. We used to throw a lot of it on a bunch of cardboard boxes, a big pile, and we'd light him. A guy named John Laswell that lit him. And it, the whole thing, we throw clinkers from the from the uh, boiler on there, and the whole thing would just completely explode. Really? Yes. They go boom. I'll never forget it. It was really pretty fun. Okay, I'm gonna move this away from the fire. Yeah. I don't want that thing going off? I with a spark or something. Whoa! That's what it does. Holy smoke! Yeah. Did you get burned? No, but you gotta be careful because you can't get burned. If that doesn't get burned, well, I do, but yeah. Burn. So, what's going on? 
Hey. What's that? <coughs> we are getting ready to go to the Sangat Dive Resort, which has become our second family, our second home during this quarantine. And we are going to bring some, Elizabeth's bringing fertilizer because she has been helping Luke plant a garden, their vegetable garden in these times. And I'm bringing my Kindle and some playing cards. Maybe I can convince someone to play some card games with me. And uh, yeah, we're going to go hang out, get off the boat, um, be with our other quarantine family. So. This big black cloud is coming down Falling angels all around A warm breeze from the subway underground The snow is falling heavily over town we head over to the resort to walk around, explore, play with Amber, the resort dog, and meet up with our friends. We're very fortunate that the owner of the resort is so welcoming. How's it going, lady? He's made our stay here feel like we're on our own private island. Legs stretched. Legs stretched. Yes. Walking around the resort. Yeah. It's nice to have somewhere to walk. Is this kind of your routine? It's nice to have somewhere to walk. It is nice. Kind of our routine to come every afternoon to the resort and say hi to everybody and get some social interaction in. Social and physical. 
At the resort, there is a cave that has become a favorite hideout for the kids. The path through the darkness leads up to a lookout where we can sit and take in the beautiful scenic views. Cave. It's pretty dark in there. How high can you go? Oh. All the way to the very top. All the way to the top? Yeah. It's kind of nice in here, eh? Where's this one go? That goes nowhere. How long can we all go on before we change our way? How long till the break of dawn? How long till it dates? How long till it Even though we're under a strict lockdown here in the Philippines, we're blessed that we have such a beautiful place to be stuck. As soon as the restrictions are lifted and Malaysia begins allowing foreign vessels again, we hope to continue sailing south on our way to Penang. How long 